Welcome to Studio Fudilio. Have you ever wanted to make a model sheet or a character turn for one of your OCs, but you just don't know how? Good, because I have too. Up until now, I've made tons of different kinds of character reference sheets and half-baked model sheets for a lot of characters that I've made over the years. But I really want to try my hand in making a legit full character turn model sheet. So join me as we figure out what the hell I'm doing and maybe have a little bit of fun along the way. Let's go. Alright guys, what's up? So before we jump into actually making the model sheet for my OC, what I wanted to do is just kind of take a peek, look into some professional industry standard character turns, model sheets, and kind of break down what makes them great, what they did in them, why they do it, and kind of just get a, get a plan for what we're going to do as we move forward. And I have a few here. They're ranging from, uh, you know, some standard cartoons from America and uh, some Japanese anime as well. And we're going to kind of look at the differences, see what people are doing, see what we want to do as we make the uh, model sheet for our OC. So first we have the OG, one of my favorites of all time, Samurai Jack by Genji Tartakovsky. And just looking at this too, you can tell this was probably all done pencil, um, pencil on paper and kind of like scanned or you know not a lot of digital going on especially probably this is this is like the older style too so this is probably you know a while ago now this is very common you see this like five the five poses the five pose character turn this is what you're gonna see in a lot of like animation character model sheets and stuff like that this is very standard and we also i took another one here that's got the uh like the head turns and the head poses and stuff so this is really good this is this is pretty detailed you're getting a lot of the angles i love when you see too like this one doesn't have the uh his like the full like kimono um that he's wearing and it's just you know it gives you like some more it gives you some more details about what the character might get into what they're going to look like with their clothes off what they're going to look like in different situations right so just really awesome here the main thing i want to take away from this is the five poses and then kind of seeing like oh okay we can do one with a different outfit a different costume no clothes this is also showing like the anatomy a little bit and like what the what the the shapes what the shapes are going to be that are going to build this character you know and if we take a look here we got chihiro from spirited away the studio ghibli movie awesome movie i chose this one there's tons of amazing model sheets and character reference sheets for studio ghibli all of their movies if you're if you are interested at all in character design or how to how to portray characters differently and how to like find the essence of a character i highly highly recommend you go through and look at miyazaki and a lot of not just miyazaki but a lot of the people who worked at studio ghibli who did did a lot of these kind of model sheets these character reference sheets some of them are masters so what you're doing is kind of you're getting a peek behind the curtain of what the original concepts for a lot of the characters were you're kind of seeing like what went into making them when they were thinking of the characters and you can see there's a lot of expressions going on and i think that the animators did such a good job because what one thing people don't really notice for a lot of animation is when you're animating someone, you're acting. You're literally drawing the character or whatever it is. You're doing the acting that's appearing on screen through your own drawings. And you can see here, this is just like, you got like the shoes are off here. She's chilling. You know, this pose right here. All these poses on their own would be really hard to draw. But like, even just like this, right? Like leaning over, same with this pose right here. Like this like tired kid, like don't want to do anything like my life sucks like pose right there that those you know when you're a kid you have that feeling sometimes or like this one too you could understand what's going on in the story just through Chihiro's poses and that's super powerful all right so this is the last one that we're looking at and I saved this for last because this is essentially what I want to make right here this is so similar to the Samurai Jack one right this is a five pose character turn and within the turn you see finn is not only he's not doing the same pose the exact same time you got you know just the standard the three fourths back 
and then he starts to move his arms, his legs, things get a little um, more fun and expressive as we go, right? And so this is the main thing I wanted to focus on. We have our five poses and what the five poses are is the front. So we got the front, we got the back, we got the three fourths, front facing three fourths, we got the profile, and we got the back three fourths, okay? And essentially if you have these five poses, you are getting almost every angle, right? You can go in between, I think if once you start getting to like six and then 12, kind of like splitting it up in between that, I think if you have between like five and 10, six and 12, you can get a really smooth character turn. Like if you put all the actual images together, it would look like it's like a nice animated spin, which we're gonna try at the end, see if we can do that too. But for now, I just wanted to take a look at this. So what ours is gonna be is gonna be five poses like this with our own character. Uh, I will color it in as well. And so you can see here too, Finn's a fairly simple character, but because of that, you can get really creative with how you, know, you move his arms around, bend his knees. You can see he's smiling. You can do stuff with the face here. But the main thing I wanna take away from this one is just the presentation. So the way it's presented here, the layout, I'd like to make up my own little mock um, kind of character template sheet here for Studio Fudilio. And then what we're gonna do is we'll have the five colored poses and I might make up a few random stuff for the information over here. But this is what we're looking at. This is what we're gonna try and recreate in our own style in our own, with our own character. And I'm super excited. So now that we've looked at everything and we've gone over some different uh, examples and references for different model sheets and character turns, let's get started on our own. All right, now before we jump into some time lapses and me just working on this, I wanted to pull up these sketches that I made just a little while ago. I wanted to do some analog, just pencil on paper sketches and kind of get a feel for what the turns are actually gonna be like and just to get some, cause I'm gonna do the rest of this digitally and when you do it digitally, you, for me at least, I feel like sometimes you can kind of lose a little bit of the essence of what a character is, especially if you, if you have some inspiration and you get that pen to paper, that pencil to paper and you can really feel the character coming alive. For me, I can lose some of that when I go just start off digitally and when you work digitally throughout the process. So I wanted to have at least some analog touch to this and you can see here, I did the five main poses and I also included, you know, some items and some trinkets uh, for what she's gonna use. And I did like two, essentially two special poses. And I know these aren't really necessary, but I kind of wanted to at least include them here. We'll see if I uh, have room or I'm able to include it in the final product. But what I wanted to do here too is just explain what this character is and just kind of break down what the inspiration was behind it, what the story is, and, and just give a little background to this character to hopefully make it, you know, more interesting as we make the character. And I also, you know, for you, for anyone out there who might be following along to this or you want to make your own OC, your own original characters, I highly suggest trying to, even if you're not fully sure of everything, if you don't have it all fully fleshed out, just come up with at least some kind of a backstory or at least some kind of, you know, some kind of rhyme to the reason, right? So this is a character that I've been working on for a long time and has gone through a few iterations of different styles and different purposes and different stories, honestly. And I've kind of landed at this character for now. So her name is Penny and she's part of a story, this kind of, this kind of world that I've created called Doodle Island. And she's the main character and essentially what she does is she's like an adventurer. She's a cartographer. She loves to find maps and go exploring and complete new maps and write her own maps. And that's kind of the vibe that I have for her going forward right now. And she's young, she's not super old. I would say she's probably like early teens. I haven't decided on every little detail and I have some of the basics, some of the, the general things nailed down. And that's what's gonna help me put some life into this character as I go through and finish designing and, and like deciding on what her final design is gonna be. So you can see, She's pretty simple. It's very Adventure Time inspired. I have this, these five turns. The, the character is simple. She's wearing um, essentially just like a tank top, some pants, and these fun boots that she wears. 
I wanted her to be, she's an adventurer, right? And the main thing I think would be this cool little bandana. So yeah, this is Penny. She's a cartographer. She's an adventurer. She's an explorer. And she loves to make uh, <laughs> ambient synth music, kind of beeps and boops, kind of nature ambient synth music with her on her on her analog synths and she likes to play them for her plants who then like to dance to her music so this is like a fun little quirk i i, I love when you know your favorite characters have little this is mostly for cartoons and stuff too right when your favorite characters have fun little quirks i think adventure time does that great like jake plays the viola i love when you can really just get a peek into a character what they're like what kind of things they like to do when they're not like on the clock right when they're not saving the day or like not in the main part of their story what kind of things do they do because that's going to make them this this type of thing makes them more believable so that is my character penny this is the initial sketch that i've made and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and i'm in clip studio paint here on my XP Pen tablet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these as a reference. I'm going to clean them up. I'm going to add all the lines and try and make sure everything is pretty pretty aligned. I'm honestly, I'm not going to worry too much about making everything perfect. This is just a reference sheet for myself. It is not going to be used in a professional animation studio or anything like that. So I'm not too worried about making anything, everything so perfect. I'm more worried about having some consistency, having a, a nice sheet that I can reference, obviously, but, you know, really keeping some of the spirit of the character in there. And when this is all finished, what I'm going to do is print out the actual sheet like it would be an actual model sheet that I would print out and use as if I was working on an animation and I needed references for the character and I'm really excited. It's, it'll hopefully, when everything comes together, it'll look cool, it'll, it'll be fun to make, and yeah, let's get started. All right guys, the illustration, the model sheet is finished, and I'm just gonna go over my process here while we watch the time lapse back, so let's start that. And you can see the first thing that I did is I just imported the sketch that I made into Clip Studio Paint and uh, just started setting up some guidelines, some proportion guidelines and cleaning some things up, making some changes, fixing, tweaking little things here and there. And I'm just doing this first, I'm doing a first rough pass with a, a pencil brush in Clip Studio. And yeah, you can see here, I wasn't trying to make anything too perfect. I was letting it be a, still a little bit loose and fun, but I wanted it to still, you know, line up. I wanted, since I was really trying to make a model sheet here, I wanted everything to be essentially, you know, the same proportions and to be consistent and to really get the feel for what the different poses are going to be. You can see the back three-fourths pose, that gave me the most trouble. Um, I was having difficulty kind of getting the actual, I was drawing it too much from a profile and I kept going back and forth and kind of tweaking it and I think I eventually got it to look a little bit more realistic like if you were looking kind of from the back as a three-fourths view. And so after the pencils, I just went in with a, um, I have this one round brush pen that I like in Clip Studio. It's a custom brush, but it's essentially just like a, uh, a round brush with the correction, line correction and smoothness just turned like all, all, not all the way up, but you know, a high amount of correction there. So if I want something that's a little bit smoother and polished like this for like a model or character reference sheet, then that's always the pen that I go to. And you can see, yeah, I'm just doing the special pose here. The synth was kind of challenging, but a lot of fun to draw. I wanted to make it as realistic as possible since I'm a musician myself, and uh, I know it always can be annoying when people don't depict those things realistically. And since the lines were done, I just took a palette. I took the colors that I had already used for this character and some other stuff, including the Doodle Island animation, which you can see a still frame of there and just went in and colored everything. Uh, no shadows or anything, just flats. Just just didn't want to get too complicated for this. And you can see I changed up the colors a little bit for the special pose, because I wanted to show what Penny might look like if she was just wearing some other clothes, you know, chilling on a Saturday, making some, some synth music. So this is the finished product here. You can see I also added the, I added the border around it, um, kind of took inspiration from that one Adventure Time uh, model sheet of Finn 
bin that we looked at earlier and I added my little, I have this little Honko logo, this like your name stamp kind of logo that I made for Studio Fidelio. I put that up there in the top, you know, I wrote a column for, for character and notes. Just, I didn't want to get too cheesy with it, so I just wrote in Penny and then left the notes blank. Because if when I print this out, you know, if I actually did want to write some notes, I could always do that as well. And yep, that's it. So all that's left to do now is to go and print this bad boy out and then we will be done. So let's go. Yo, all right, guys, I have the finished product in my hands. Check it out. The model sheet for my OC Penny from the world of Doodle Island is done. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah, super stoked. Um, pretty happy with how this turned out. The I printed it on just kind of my everyday printer on some a little bit thicker paper. You might be able to tell. Here's the digital illustration right here too if you want to see the finished product um, just in the full color and, and digital version. The one thing I would say is I probably, if I was gonna go back and fix anything, is I'd probably go in and tweak some of the colors and maybe tweak uh, how I'm printing it and maybe try it on a better printer to get a little bit better color accuracy and to make it a little bit more crystal clear and sharp. But yeah, I'm super happy with how it turned out. I had a lot of fun making this. I learned a lot. When you draw your characters over and over, you start to learn more and more about them. When you have to make decisions about like, okay, this is how the hair is gonna go. This is how this is gonna look from this angle. It forces you to make a lot of design choices that you might not have made otherwise if you were just doing some kind of like free sketching in your journal or your sketchbook or something. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I had a lot of fun making this and I hope this video helped or at the very least gave you some inspiration or motivation to get out there and make a model sheet or a character turn for one of your OCs. And yeah, this was a blast. So maybe I'll come back and do another character someday. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.